All right, pull up. I'll make you stop when you go. Good, good. I'm Mike Champo. Welcome to this segment of Training Minutes. Today, we're going to talk about rescuing people via the tower ladder bucket. If you notice, I lined the bucket up with the victim. Many times, a lot of us have been taught, line up your turntable, raise, rotate, extend. One of the values of a tower ladder, all right, it's going to make the rescue pickup shorter when we line the bucket up. This way, when I come up out of the cradle, I can already start rotating towards the victim and extending as the firefighter is climbing up towards the bucket when he's coming up the stairwell. He'll make sure he's going to look at the cradle, right? He wants to make sure it's clear of any tools or equipment. Maybe some of it bounced around on a response. Once he gets up to his bucket position, he'll know it takes three to five seconds if you know your apparatus to clear the cradle. So he can come up on his hoist throttle and he can start rotating after three to five seconds in the air. The first thing we should always do, even if we're rescuing life, is put our safety belt on. Any jerky motion, uh, wind, whatever happens, we don't want this boom throwing us out of the bucket. So we're going to ensure we put our safety belt on first. Another little trick of the trade, okay, is with controls on one side of the bucket, right, even ones that have controls up front that slide across, okay, we want to be furthest away from the victim. We don't want to have a control box towards the victim or in the middle. It gives us less room to rescue them. Also, what happens if I'm operating our control box right here and the victim's coming in and accidentally hits the handle? Right? Well, we should have a firefighter always on the pedestal so we can step on a dead man switch to knock that out. But let's move the control box away from the victim. One other tactical tip. If you have a stationary control and you're flying to the opposite end, I like to open this door up and leave it open, okay? As I'm flying, I have full visibility to the victim. I can come up out of the cradle, I can start moving. When the door is closed, right, I only have a little inch spot each way. If I'm in smoke, trees, going through some obstructions, trying to reach the victim, I might have to have full visibility. So if I open this door, as I'm flying, I have full visibility to the victim. If you notice, when I approached the victim, I came up about equal level. I don't want to come from below, okay? I have vision of them. I can watch them. If I come from below, they may decide to jump or drop a child out. When I fly with the bucket closed, the door, right, as I'm approaching, I might not be able to see fully from the opposite side of the bucket. When I'm this way, I have a blind spot. So if I do open the bucket door, remember, Always wear your safety belt. I have full visibility as I get closer to the building. If you notice, I had full visibility. I still have an inch or two, but I can pick up the rescue pickup right now in this situation. We don't recommend coming in from below. Okay, if a person's sitting on a windowsill, they may try to jump at you. I'd always like to be face to face. Sir, stay in the window, stay in the window. You may have to be vocal. However, there's been times and fires where people are dangling children. You may have to come in at that angle. Just be prepared for them to drop the child or jump themselves. In this segment of Training Minutes, we went over some rescue pickups from the tower ladder bucket. 
This has side doors, okay? If you have front doors, you can still attack from the side, lining up the bucket, and just having the people come over to sill, okay? If you have to too, you can line up the turntable and you can bring them in the front doors. But remember, lining up the bucket reduces the speed and time it takes to rescue a victim. I'm Mike Champo. Thanks for watching this segment of Training Minutes.